How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. It is the end of the school day. It is currently 20 to four, which means that I have been pupil three for the last 40 minutes. Um, I have, I use this time predominantly to update working walls, check to see if there's any books that need marking. And as I was doing so, I had a little think about some of the software that I use within my class, specifically in creating presentations and flip charts that I obviously teach from. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the software that I use, um, the pros and the cons to it. Uh, and hopefully at the end of this video, you might have a good bit of an idea as to the kind of things that you can use. Now, if you've been teaching for a little while, this video is going to be nothing new and everything that I cover in it, you've probably already used. Um, but if you're a new teacher, this video might be perfect. So the three pieces of sort of presentation software that I'm going to talk about is PowerPoint. Um, flip charts made with uh, Active Inspire, and finally Seesaw. Now they all have pros, there are a few cons to some of them as well, and I'm gonna be talking about ease of use, the speed at which you can create presentations, and also how interactive they are. You know, I'm, I'm a year four teacher, being able to interact with the children, using the interactive whiteboards is really important, and not all of these softwares is as easy to interact with as others. So let's get into it. So first up, we've got PowerPoint. Now, I'm not gonna to talk too much about PowerPoint purely because it is probably one of the most familiar softwares for creating presentations. You've obviously got all of the buttons along the top. You can insert GIFs, pictures, you can make things bounce on and off the screen with the animations tool and transitions tool. One thing that I will pay, bring to everyone's attention, however, is this little link at the top called Designer. Now, Designer is very, very efficient. It's a very easy and useful tool. Now at the moment I've not got anything on the page other than the background and you can adjust the background at the click of a button and you can make your slideshow and your presentation look however you want. Plus there are many more design ideas available for your choosing. The reason why I like the designer tool isn't because you can make funky backgrounds, no. It's because what it can do for you is if you stick a load of pictures and text onto the blank screen and click the designer tool, it puts them in really nice and easy to see orders. It means that you're not there constantly moving your text around and your pictures, you put them up, it will then basically arrange them for you and you can choose whichever one you think is best. So I've gone ahead, I've stuck three pictures on the screen and literally a piece of text that says, which animal can fly? Very basic, I know, but this is just an example. Um, if I then come across to where it says designer and I click on this button, it generates all kinds of different imagery. Um, very, very simple, very, very easy. I can then click on one that I might like, let's say this one here, and it changes it automatically. You can do these for every single slide. There are many options available and it just creates a really nice layout that you can use throughout. The only downside about this, while it's very, very easy and efficient to use, and it's very much just a copy paste and let the designer tool do its thing, when you're using an interactive whiteboard, you can't directly write on a PowerPoint. You have to use your screen, you then have to delete everything. And if you're wanting to keep those annotations for later use or for your working wall, you simply can't do it. So that is the downside. The next piece of software that I'm gonna talk about is Active Inspire. Now Active Inspire allows you to create flip charts. Um, they, they do look a little bit outdated, I'll be honest, but they are very, very effective. You can add lots of things in the same way that you can with PowerPoint. You can add GIFs, especially if you're working with youngest children to add a bit of humor in there. You can add pictures, you can add links to websites, you can add all sorts of things. Plus, when it comes to interactivity, I had to figure that one out then, it is really, really interactive. You can stick it up on the whiteboard. There is a highlighter and a pen tool in the actual software, which means that you can write on it, you can move things about, you can get children to come up and write their answers and their comments and it saves automatically. That means that you can move between different pages and all of the annotations are there. I find that really useful, especially for working walls, because you can then just print off the screen. You don't have to waste extra time making your own special things for your working wall. It's all in place. Okay, so I've currently got the flip chart on the working board, on the, on the working board, on the interactive whiteboard. It's got some maths manipulatives up there. I can do a couple of things with it. I can move them with my finger. I can also use the pen tool to highlight and click. 
So if I want to get kids to show me a certain number, for instance, I can write it on the board. If I click on the pen tool, I can ask them to do 342, for instance. I've then got that big and bold on the board. They can then come up and they can choose the number of manipulatives that need to go in to create that number. So they can come down, they can put one, two, three, one, two, three, oh, there we go, and four, and then one, two. So as you can see, it's very, very easy to do. And if I then click the next button, it moves over to the next slide and it saves it all. So if we then move on and do something else, I can then skip back and everything is still there. At the end of the lesson, if I want to add something to the working wall, all I need to do is go onto my, my laptop, take a snippet of it and then stick that up onto the working wall. And there you go, easy as that. And the final piece of software is Seesaw. Now Seesaw I've used quite a bit, largely because it's an online resource. What that means is that you can assign children and pupils with activities, with presentations, with homeworks, assignments, you name it, you can assign it. And they can, as long as they're part of your Seesaw, you'd set up a class, of course, they can then access it from their own devices. They can look at the resource, they can upload their own work and things like that. Now I've not directly used it in class, although I know it is a resource that you can use in class. And the great thing about that is whilst you are teaching, the children can observe and access your slides whilst on a device themselves. Now that might not be appropriate for everybody or for all the children that you teach, but for some children, it will just make life a little bit more accessible. It will mean that they can interact with it whilst you're working with it as well. You can uh, create a few things and I'm gonna show you now. So this is like my resource library, my landing page. Um, you can see that I have shown a few things in the past. These are things I've set previously to my pupils. If I go onto here, I can create canvases for the children, assessments. I can upload PDFs and things like that on there. I can link other resources and create notes. Another really great thing about this site is the children can upload their work directly onto Seesaw. You can mark it and you don't even have to mark it with, with like a pen or comments. You can leave voice notes and video notes. So the children can go away, they can look at what you've commented and they can make adjustments to it. They can send it back to you. You can create dialogue. Now again, this might not be appropriate for every single lesson, but it, it comes into play in many lessons. Um, we use it here to save on paper as well. It's a very, very efficient resource, um, friendly for the environment, and it's definitely one that you should make the most of using within your room. So there you go. And that is the end of this video. Um, those are three bits of software that I have used in school and I use on a fairly frequent and regular basis. Now you'll find naturally within your teams, depending on the, your school setting, that some teachers might have preference over certain software, that's very natural. Um, but like I say, those are things that I use and I find them very, very useful and they have their own pros and cons by nature. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it at all useful, don't forget to hit the like button. If there's anything you want to know in particular about any of the software I spoke about or others, comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. Um, I am bringing out something exciting very, very soon and I will share that with everybody that will hopefully help some teachers, especially those new in the profession. So keep your eyes open for that and I will see you in the next one. Bye.